Hi, this is Dr. Sana Hashmi. And this week in my Prince Eye on China column, I analyze the Chinese discourse in India's Lok Sabha election results. Uh, so to start with, I would say that it is highly unlikely that we would encounter any major significant changes on the foreign policy front under Modi 3.0. And one of the indicators of this is, of course, the retaining of Dr. S. J. Shankar as the external affairs minister. Uh, but when we say continuity in foreign policy, um, I also mean that there would be continuity in India-China relations. Uh, it's, but I don't really see any major changes with respect to how India's China policy is going to change in uh, Modi, Modi 3.0. So it's been a few days since the results have come out, but a lot has already happened in India-China relations. And if it, that is any indication of how the future of India-China relations look like, I would actually say that I don't foresee a major reset in India-China relations uh, under Modi 3.0. So one reason is that even though China has been making calls uh, to India for resolving differences and to keep the border dispute at the back burner, but despite such calls, uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping has not yet sent a congratulatory message to Prime Minister Modi. And instead, Chinese uh, Premier Li Qiang extended his congratulatory message and Chinese uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they tweeted out, they issued a few statements, uh, a note of con congratulations to Prime Minister Modi. However, uh, uh, even though he did not receive it from President Xi Jinping, Modi did receive and even responded promptly to Taiwanese President Lai ching con congratulatory message uh, on Twitter. So even though she decided to skip congratulating Modi for his third term, uh, and I think primarily because how the relations with China have been and also how there are more and more, uh, there is more and more advancement between India and Taiwan, we, uh, what uh, I have noticed and what we are seeing is that the Chinese social media uh, has had a wide-ranging discussion on India and its election result. And then the major focus of uh, this discussion has been on uh, Bhartiya Janta Party's failure to secure an absolute majority. And um, a number of commentaries and uh, by scholars, by analysts, and the social media posts on different uh, platforms uh, have one talking point uh, that has been discussed widely, and that is an attempt to prove that Modi is not as invincible as everyone thought he is at what he was supposed to be after the elections. Um, then a number of posts also highlighted the challenges and difficult political landscape Modi 3.0 will have to encounter, and including a stronger role for and the voices of uh, the opposition, which was, of course, missing uh, during Modi 1.0 and 2.0 ad uh, administration. So, uh, however, there's also a, a prevalent view, especially among the strategic community in China, uh, that Modi throughout his second tenure and even during the election, election campaign used China as a card for domestic political gains. And uh, further, given there was no landslide victory for Modi this time, uh, there is this idea specifically among some scholars who work in the think tank and the universities that Modi might resort to hyping the China threat to consolidate his power at home. And this is something that what Xi Jinping has been doing. So perhaps this is an idea that is coming out of uh, what's happening uh, in China on the foreign policy front or with respect to India-China relations. Um, then some analysts also argue that Modi 3.0 means a continuation in India's pro-US and anti-China stances. Uh, that how Modi has used uh, the great power rivalry between China and India to India's advantage. And this is something that some Chinese analysts believe that this is also going to be continued now. Uh, but apart from all these negative uh, posts and negative comments about Modi and India, there's also so at some level there is appreciation for Modi's first India first policy and issues based cooperation. And then how Modi is trying to lead India towards development, towards growth, um, and also about uh, making India initiatives and also how Modi is trying to uh, strengthen and build India's semiconductor ecosystem. Uh, but apart from that, uh, there was an interesting perspective uh, that I came across while uh, studying Chinese views of India and Modi and of course the election result. A scholar from a Fudan University that's in Shanghai has written that I've also mentioned in the piece uh, that contrary to the popular belief that Modi is a Hindu nationalist leader, he has tried to strike a balance between diverse cultural and religious ethos of the country and that Modi's words and actions serve as a political reflection of India's diverse and fragmented social and cultural landscape. Um, then uh, and apart from that, another topic that was discussed widely was, of course, Modi 
uh, exchange on Twitter with Lai, Taiwanese president, and it did open the floodgates on Chinese social media. Uh, both English and Mandarin, Mandarin state-owned media, and as well as social media platform, were full with threats and wild remarks uh, for Modi and India uh, to, for closing up to Taiwan. Uh, nonetheless, there is a minority segment uh, uh, apart from all these, uh, despite all these uh, differences, issues, uh, Taiwan, India, uh, Bonhomi, there is this minority segment that is still advocating for uh, improved India-China relations. But that, that is, of course, a minority view and not a lot of articles or posts have been written on this subject or even suggesting that perhaps China should reach out to uh, India in a very sincere way. And mostly the blame, if you look at the if we analyze the commentary, if we look at what is coming out of the Chinese social media from the scholars, we would realize that uh, most of these commentaries and most of these uh, discourses about shifting the blame on India for deterioration India-China relations and its aspiration for a greater role in the region. So uh, we would see that is, uh, there is hardly any uh, blame or even any accountability on China's part to strengthen or to improve ties uh, with India. Uh, but what I found particularly intriguing was the deliberate use of uh, photos showcasing only the rural parts and congested areas uh, of India in articles and posts uh, that were uh, that I found on the Chinese social media and state-owned media. So there was a complete absence of photos from uh, the major cities depicting uh, growth infrastructure development. So this intentional uh, omission seems... Uh, that there is an attempt to craft a narrative that portrays India as inferior to China, and that this attempt that you know India's aspiration to rival China is un are unrealistic and it cannot be achieved because India is at least 30, 40 years behind China. So this all does tell us that what the uh, that about that how the future of India-China relations look like. Uh, but there's also little doubt that India will continue to maintain its policy, what it has been following with respect to China and its firm, firm commitment uh, to resolve border dispute as a prerequisite for normalized state of India-China relations. Uh, but the discourse in China and the official statement that we have been seeing specifically in the past uh, one week or 10 days surrounding Modi 3.0, uh, then if we couple that with the lack of genuine effort that we have been seeing from the Chinese side, it does tell us that China is least sincere about stabilizing relations with China. And improvements in relation cannot really be achieved without China paying genuine attention to India's concern. So this also exemplifies a, a glaring gap between China's words and actions, and there is definitely a stark display of double standards from the Chinese side. So. I would say that the ball is definitely in China's court. No, nothing much has changed with respect to how India is viewing China. And if China is very uh, is sincere about what it actually says, it is a must for the country to reassess its stance towards China and perhaps adjust its approach accordingly. And uh, the dispute, um, I think if we talk about India's policy and India's approach going ahead, moving forward, I would say the dispute will not be placed on the back burner anymore, like what we have seen during Modi 2.0, specifically from 2020. And India will not allow China to use the dispute as a pressure tactic anymore as well. So there are definitely uh, differences in expectations and how the two countries are viewing relations with each other and what are their prerequisites for resolving the differences is totally different. There is a lot of divergence in this uh, area. So I would say, um, to conclude, I would say that it would be very, it would be prudent for China to realize that India of today is very different from how India used to be or India of the past. And the policies that worked before for China, they're not going to work with India anymore. And for India, uh, China's red lines are uh, meaningless, are irrelevant if China is not respecting India's red line. I think this is one of the major points that we have seen and that has come out. Uh, during Modi 2.0, and I think this is something that we're also going to see in Modi 3.0. Um, and uh, without, for China, I would say that without assuming genuine responsibility and addressing India's concerns, uh, the relations between India and China are less likely to achieve a normal state of relationship. The relations are likely to remain fragile. And I would say if this uh, is continued, we are perhaps going to see a further deterioration in relation between the two countries. Thank you.